I just received this interesting French clock. It belongs to a Louis XV style mantel clock. Very similar to a Balthazar clock from the mid 1700s with an identical cupid on the top. The whole clock sitting on the porcelain elephant. Owner was concerned about shipping damage, so only shipped the top piece. It's a heavy casting. Here, there are two screws that hold a floral decoration that runs up to the top. The other side has a broken piece of a decoration mount. Some solder on the top where it used to be fastened. The cupid's right hand has a mounting hole in it for holding a fan. Hinge is in fair shape. Lots of scratches around the front door latch. The bezel casting has cracks in it. Could be cracks from cooling the casting too fast or possible age cracks. These scratches on the case look like someone was attempting to open the front from the wrong location. This joint is where the trim meets the side of the clock case. It's not the bezel. This joint here is where the bezel meets the case trim and is where it opens from. I've not had it opened yet and the bezel to case trim fit up is tight. So to prevent any scratches or damage, I'll use several pieces of mylar to help get it started. Minute track and numbers on the dial appear to have been applied using an early silk screened process, then touched up by hand with a brush. Under magnification, you can see clearly small areas that were hand painted on this dial. It's a transition dial back when silk screening was first starting to be used on clock dials. Some shards of porcelain from the dial. Rest on the steel taper pin for the minute hand. I've seen this style of French hands that have been hand cut and hand engraved before. The hands on this clock are very thick and were made on a stamping press. The design is stamped on them instead of hand engraved. Here's where the porcelain chips came from. The winding arbors aren't centered in the dial hole. Oh, the whole movement has shifted during shipping. The movement is loose. It isn't fastened. Movement should have been secured with taper pins through these three dial pan posts. Taper pins are missing. Movement looks undamaged. The beveled glass on the back door looks original, but someone has sandblasted the inside of it. The designer's intent was for it to be a viewing pane to see the movement. It no longer has its original function. The movement has been exposed to moisture. Most all the steel parts have rust damage on them. Dark gray spots on the brass is moisture damage. The brass has micro pits where the zinc has reacted with the copper in the brass. I'll do a quick visual inspection, then pull the movement apart. Nice nickel plated cast bronze bell. Bronze bells have a nice warm distinct tone to them. Hope the balance pivots are in good shape. Rest on these control levers. Someone slipped with a screwdriver on the head of this screw. A deep gouge here on the front plate. A couple X marks, 
scratch to mark the location of this pivot plate. An original stamp from one of the makers of the movement. I'll remove the balance wheel assembly so it doesn't get damaged. I'll pull off all these outer peripheral items first. Pull these pillar post pins. Up close, the moisture damage can be seen better on the brass plates. A chunk of high acid debris here has caused some heavy corrosion in the brass. Could be a chunk of chew. The plates were originally polished to a mere finish. Oil around the pivots has hardened to a thick wax material. Scratched numbers on the plate here. Stamped serial number of the movement. Oil is so stiff, it's tough to check for pivot hole wear. It will need to be thoroughly cleaned first. Some of the pivots are glued in their pivot holes with dried oil. The mirror-like reflection of the brass is still vaguely visible. When new, this must have been a beautiful reflective movement. The makers even had the inside of the plates highly polished at one time. I've cleaned the movement, time to inspect its condition. After years of moisture abuse, the rear plate still retains a fair amount of its original reflective finish. It's not as clear as a mirror, but very nice up close. Plates are thick. They're made from cast brass. Platform escapement has been dismantled and cleaned. The plate that mounts here holds the escape wheel jewels. This balance staff cap jewel mounts in this plate. This steel balance staff cap jewel setting mounts on the balance cock. The cap jewel is broke into multiple pieces. These large cap jewels aren't being produced today. The other cap jewel is in good condition. This wavy polished finish shows it's a handmade natural stone, probably ruby or sapphire. The working surface is nice and flat with several wear areas from the balance staff pivot. 
wear spots start to show up if these movements don't get oiled regularly. This burr on the screw hole might cause fit up problems. It could prevent the total seating of the brass setting and affect the end shake adjustment of the balance staff. The jewel is held in from this brass that has been rubbed over it. This jewel setting is made from steel and shows signs of rust pitting. This hole here serves as a viewing and relief hole for the jewel. The back side is unpolished and has a blackish finish left from the hardening process. Not sure about this burr on the inside of the relief hole. It may have caused the jewel to fracture from over tightening the fasteners. When I removed the steel cap, the jewel fell out in pieces. It's a high profile jewel. These aren't being produced today. Up close, you can see imperfections in the finish. Not a real high quality jewel when new. This jewel setting cap wasn't finished real well. This burr should be removed so it doesn't cause any future issues with the next jewel. I need a cutter with a profile similar to these. These are old, made from low to medium carbon steel. Great for cutting soft steel and brass. This steel jewel setting is hardened steel. It's hard as a rock. These cutters would be destroyed if used on it. I need a cutter that's harder. This diamond coated cutter will work. I can feel it cutting. The original countersink was egg shaped. This cutter has trued it up. It's made it more concentric. Now to search some of my stock for an obsolete jewel. These are too new. Nice vintage Swiss cap jewels from the same time period as the clock. One day I'll run out of these if people keep bringing me these old buggers to fix. This jewel looks like a better quality than the original. Profile and dimensions fit perfect. It's not a rubbed in jewel like you see in the brass settings. Now to hand clean the jewel holes. This removes any residue that might be left in the holes after cleaning.
Clean it from both sides. Small drop of oil on the cap jewel. Escape wheel cock. Looking good so far. Escape wheel pinion has some rust pitting damage, but we'll have to do. Escape wheel teeth look perfect. It's a cylinder escapement. Each tooth has a 10 degree lift on them that works against the cylinder mounted in the balance wheel. These haven't been made for years. They were replaced by the detached lever escapement sometime in the 1850s. Balance wheels on a cylinder balance all have an overbanking stop pin on them. A hole is drilled into the outer rim of the balance wheel and a stop pin is pressed in. The hub on the underside of this balance wheel shows signs of hand working. It's a hand finished balance wheel. These hand carved areas on the underside shows the maker shaved off material during the poising operation. These pivots on a cylinder balance staff are actually made on a plug. The plug is pressed into the cylinder. The plugs can be removed and replaced as needed. This cutout in the cylinder is where the escape wheel teeth work on the cylinder. Cylinder escapements are a contact escapement. So the escape wheel has constant contact with the cylinder. Because of this, it's called a frictional rest escapement. It's this constant friction that makes them poor timekeepers compared to a lever escapement. That cap jewel mounted up perfect. Pin the hairspring. This pin on the cock is the overbanking stop pin. It prevents the balance wheel from overbanking and damaging the escape wheel and cylinder. Mount the balance wheel. Seems to be nice and free. Now to mount the escape wheel. I don't know of anyone fabricating these cylinder escape wheels anymore, so need to be careful not to cause any damage.
rotates nice and free. One loose taper pin in the case. I need three. The movement is mounted on three dial pan posts. The porcelain dial is mounted through the dial pan by three dial posts. The posts go through the dial pan and have taper pins through the posts. Only one dial post is intact. The other two posts are broke off. So the dial is a little loose. The whole dial assembly is held in with these two screws. Tighten the screws and the front is pulled inwards. The screws have some rust on them, so some oil to help them come out. The only pin holding the dial in. These two brass pins here have been installed by someone in an attempt to hold the dial in place. This is the only pin holding the dial. It's stuck and so rusty I believe it's better to be left alone. Two holes in the dial pan where the missing dial posts were at one time. A signature on the inside of the bezel mounting frame. It looks like an India ink pen was used. It's not in English. Maybe someone who knows French can give us a clue to whose signature it might be. Might lead us to the maker of the clock. Pen I found inside fits the hole. Just need a couple more and then get the movement mounted. These should work. Perfect. Balance has good motion for a cylinder escapement. Make sure the striking mechanism is working. Everything looks good so far. Ready to mount it in the case. A nice running cylinder movement. It has just over 180 degrees of amplitude. This is normal for a cylinder movement. Mount the movement.
a nice Louis XV mantel clock ready to keep time again.